You want to remember that when you go into the app, you're going to see here in the app that we've got some tutorials for these different challenges. So if you get stuck, the community likes to go through and, and create tutorials and post those tutorials. And a lot of times those tutorials will be in different CAD systems. So even if you get stuck, a lot of times there'll be a tutorial in there for your CAD system. But this particular challenge doesn't have a tutorial because it just got posted. And wow, guys, we've already seen that a couple of people have gotten in here and successfully solved this model. That is pretty darn cool. So even just since we've been talking here, kind of getting ready for this live solve. And if you want, you can go down here into the first 42 and you can see how quickly people were able to solve this model. You can kind of see who was able to get up there and get that thing solved first. But wow, that is really impressive. So, all right, guys, let's get into it here. We're going to say click here to begin and go. So the question here is, what is the mass of this part in xx.x grams? Now, last year, we released this model for Rich Pen, and we had it made out of plain carbon steel, and it was much larger. I wanted to make this a little bit smaller because I thought that this would be a pretty cool model to 3D print. If Rich wanted to 3D print this and keep it on his desk, I've made it just a little bit smaller so it'll fit on a 150 by 150 bed. Of course, if you happen to have a larger printer than that, then you could always print it, you know, upscale it and print it a little bit larger. That's the cool thing about these challenges is that when you do these challenges you have the model so you can change it to look however you like so you can see here that in the case of this model I think this is going to be pretty straightforward as far as the number of features go and so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by asking myself where should the origin be located on this model and I think that considering that we've got these dimensions here coming from the center of this circle here I'll probably choose to put the origin right here and the reason I'm going to do that is because my first sketch is going to be the sketch of this kind of S shape and then my second sketch can be created on a new plane that is offset up top here, up to this 38 millimeters. So if my top plane is already running right through the middle of the part here, then that's gonna make it really easy for me to offset that plane up top there. And then I can extrude my second sketch, which is gonna be that hex. So as far as the very first sketch, it's gonna look like this S shape. The second sketch, it's gonna look like this hex shape, kind of looking down from the top here. It's kind of hexagonal shape here. And then I'll extrude that down to the total length of the part, which is one. 46 millimeters and then once I've got that shape extruded down I've got that hex shape I should be able to sketch the geometry to do a cut revolve here so that geometry is a little tricky because it's going to be kind of like the outer shape you're going to take this outer shape here and then you're going to revolve that outer shape and that's why I really like this challenge because it, it reminds you that a revolve doesn't always have to be done you know to the center it, it could be done the other direction it could be done kind of to the outer shape so this is kind of a cool model to remind us about that and uh, let us practice that skill which is all about you know what practice model that's what practice models is really all about so let's bring up our keyboard cam here so that we can see all the cool keyboard shortcuts that we're using. Let's move this drawing over here to the second screen as we're working. I know that I kind of burned off a couple of minutes there, but I think it's always good before you get started modeling to just take a minute and kind of think through the challenge. Think about how you're going to make each of the different features. And if you start doing this, if you start practicing that here in the practice models, you're going to be in great shape when you're in the real world and you need to now create a real world part. Or if you want to kind of uh, scale some uh, uh, hand sketch something you've got this idea in your head and you're going to hand sketch it now you can look at those hand sketches and you can say okay now how am i going to actually create the features for that what sketches will i use what features will i use where should the origin be located and these are all really valuable skills so if you like the idea of coming up with a game plan first hit the like button on this video and let's get into it here in on shape so I'm going to uh, put the drawing over on my second screen, put on shape over here. I'm going to create a document here in on shape. I'm going to call it 250901 Rich Pen. And I see that none other than Rich Pen has logged into the chat, says, oh, no, I got here late. And got downsized <laughs> lol no sir no this is this is an improvement i think this is going to give you something that'll be easy to 3d print that'll fit on the print bed but of course you could always upscale it if you needed to you guys know that i like to uh remix these challenges before i actually release them to the public but rich the big news here is that this congratulations the personalized rich pen model is the official first model here from that personalization uh, promotion we've been running and it is 250901 it was almost a year ago september last year when we started doing this and i really appreciate your support throughout the year and everybody's support who's joined the uh the channel in one way or another whether you're a subscriber practice models premium user a joiner whatever it is i really appreciate all the support from everybody so thank you and thank you rich pen and welcome to the live stream i'm glad that you made it made it just in time 
So guys, I'm going to be putting this in Onshape. I'm going to be putting it here in the public section of Onshape. So if you happen to get stuck on this model and you want to see how I constructed it, you can just log into Onshape, even with a free account, and then you can search the public space for this file name, and then you'll find my file and you can poke through the tree and see how I made each of the features. That's a great resource to use if you ever get stuck on a model and want to see the actual feature tree that somebody else used. So I'm going to say create public document and... Let's get into it here. We're going to follow the game plan. Front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal too. S key to jump into the circle command. I'm going to create a circle here using the radius that's called out on the drawing, 14 times 2. Enter. And then, because it's going to give me the diameter. And then I'm going to do the same thing with that outer circle. So this outer circle here is going to be 31 times 2. Enter. Then I'll, I'll kind of move my mouse down below here, or maybe I'll, I'll even uh, sketch a line that goes down below here. So just sketch a vertical line here, and that vertical line is going to be at a distance of 45. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing down below here. So S key circle, create a circle here. The circle is going to have a radius of 14 times 2, enter. And this circle here is going to have a radius of 31 times 2, enter. And so now, now I've got those those circles in place. The only thing I, I have to do is begin a line command and create a line that maybe goes across here like this, quadrant point to quadrant point, and then create a line here that goes across like this. And again, quadrant point to quadrant point. Now it doesn't have to go all the way across. The truth is I could have made that just half the line, but I just like doing this sketch this way to show you how well on shape handles multi contours. Cause you know, this is a lot easier than trying to sketch and trim and make sure that you've got tangency all along the way. This is a, a much easier solution here. Now, as far as some of these dimensions go, what we could do is we could right click on this dimension here and we could say, change to a driven dimension and we could right click on this dimension here and say change to a driven dimension and right click here on this dimension and say change to a driven dimension and the reason we would do that is because this circle and this circle here are equal so i'll press the letter e and this circle and this circle here are equal so i'll press the letter e and this arc and this arc here are tangent. So I'll press the letter T and now we see that sketch goes back to fully constrained. Now, the reason that's important is because if this diameter were to change, we kind of want everything else to automatically update. So if I were to change this diameter to 66, let's say, we kind of want all this other stuff to just automatically update. We don't want to have to change it there and then change it on that other dimension, change it on the other dimension and change it on the other dimension. We just want to change it there. We just want to change it in one spot. So let's set that back to 31 times two and let's remember that when we have sketch geometry that is uh related let's go in and add those relationships you know we don't we don't need to have a bunch of uh, uh duplicate dimensions that are related to each other change them to driven so you can still see the value but then add in those relationships so it's easier to make a parametric edit so now we're going to choose extrude and when we go into extrude here, the first thing we're going to do is press the space bar. And the reason we're doing that is because pressing the space bar will clear this selection box. So we press the space bar and there we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to choose this region, this region, this region, uh, this region, this region, and this region. Look at that. I love seeing that, how that all comes together as you go through and, and click through those different regions. And then the depth of this extrusion is going to be 20 and I'll press tab, tab, tab and then for symmetric i'll press the space bar that way the whole thing is centered which is going to make it easier for me to locate the hex and then i'm going to press enter so let's not undervalue that point you know when it comes to locating that that uh, hex because i decided to create the origin right there and because at the center of this arc and because i decided to uh, create that extrusion uh, mid plane what i've done is i've set myself up so that the center of the hex is just going to be right here so it really saves me having to go in and add a bunch of additional dimensions to locate that hex. I can just drop it in right there, right at the center of everything. And so now what we can do is we can we can choose to um, we can choose to continue our steps here. We're gonna stick with our game plan, which is to take the top plane. I'm gonna press the S key. I'm gonna choose plane to create a new plane, and I'm gonna offset that plane up to a height of 
38 millimeters. Now, the reason that I do this as opposed to just starting the hex and, and creating it at an offset when I start the extrusion is because this gives me something in the tree that I can rename. So click on the plane in the tree, shift N to rename it. And then I could call this something like upper start plane for hex, something like that. And that way, when I look at this model later, or more importantly, when my coworker looks at this model later, they can tell right away by looking at the tree, oh, that's the upper start plane for the hex. So now they know right away what's going on and where that dimension is defined. So I just do that as almost like a like a comment or like a, it's like a love note really to my coworkers. Like I'm trying to make it easier for them. So when they start going through this model, you know, they look at the first extrusion, it's renamed to S shape. So just by looking at the tree, they're like, okay, I know what that is. And then they look at this and they're like, okay, I know what that is. They don't have to go and pick through the tree and edit features or things like that. So now I'm going to pick that plane S key, begin a sketch N key to get normal too. I'm going to launch the polygon command, single click here, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, and then I'm going to type in uh, 14. So that, that, that extra click is just to confirm that we want it to have six sides. So I'm going to type in 14 there. There we go. And then all I need to do is just hit escape, pick this line and press H for horizontal and look at that a nice fully defined sketch that is exactly what we want from our sketches fully defined every time so now we can do s key extrude let's reverse that direction and let's set that to a depth of 146 and make sure that that's set to add and it is hit the green check mark and now we go back to our front plane s key begin a sketch n key get normal to and we just need to create that kind of revolve geometry so what i do with this usually is i start out by creating a line here just kind of like hook it hook it up or, or uh, associate it to the origin here with this uh, vertical relationship so i start out by creating a line here like so and then i go in and i create an arc so s key arc and i just create an arc that looks something like this and then i drop in the radius right away radius two then i'm going to hit escape and i'm going to add some quick relationships here and those relationships are going to be this point and this point are going to be horizontal so h and this point and this point are going to be coincident so i and then the final relationship is going to be this point and this point down here are going to be coincident so i again now i am going to use this line here purely to revolve about I'm not really going to be using it for anything else. I could certainly just have this line come straight down as well. But just because I know I'm doing a revolve, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to opt to take that line and press Q, and that makes it for construction. And the reason I'm doing that is because now when I go to create this geometry here, uh, like this, coming at an angle now i can uh hit escape press the s key jump into the dimension command and create this dimension so that it crosses over that center line and i can make that dimension a diameter of six and that just lets me kind of match things up with the drawing and make sure that i'm getting all my dimensions dimensions correct and so now i'll do a final dimension here to this line here at 15 degrees and now this line here just needs to come up far enough that it protrudes outside of the of the um original shape and then s key line and we can create some additional geometry here over down over and up now these lines here they don't need to be defined but i like to define my my sketches even when it's kind of like a do nothing line just because it helps me uh, maintain predictability in the model so if i make that something like 25 or really what i probably should do is make that dimension from here to this point to make sure that it's sticking outside of the hex or even like the edge of the hex to that point so from from here from the edge of the hex to that point and then i could say that's going to be two millimeters just to make sure i've got a little bit of overlap there and then I can uh, create a dimension here coming down uh, to, you know, 10 millimeters, just a do nothing dimension. And then here I can create a dimension as well, another do nothing dimension. Now, similar to the strategy we used earlier, we could... Um, uh, we could maybe put in some notes or put in some information about these dimensions, but I think for now, I'm just going to keep moving forward with this design. So now we're going to jump into a revolve. So you see how we've created that shape. That shape is going to uh, function as our revolving shape. We're just kind of cutting around this thing. So uh, Metab says, I missed a straight line. Let's see here. Missed a straight line. I think I, think I got it. Straight line vertical. I think I got it, guys. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yep, you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, so what I did there that was in error, thank you guys very much. What I did there that was in error was I missed this segment here. So this should come up over and then go up to the rest of that segment. So let's see what I can do to kind of clean that up a little bit. I think I, I probably will just clean it up with like a, a trim here. So let's see if I do a trim here. 
to get that shape off of there. And then this is currently coincident to something. Okay, let's get that off of there. And then we could kind of like move that up like so, and then move this over here. And then there we go. Problem solved. That's what I like. That's why it's fun to practice. Remember, guys, if you if you get into these situations, I'm going to control Z here. If you get into these situations, you could certainly um, just delete this and then recreate it. But the thing is, if you if you take some time and you practice and you think to yourself, like, well, how is there any way I could reuse some of that geometry? You know, I'm going to make a, a small vertical line here and then I'm going to trim this and then I'm going to examine my relationships here and get rid of this coincident. And now I've got this shape here that I can just drag up and I've got this shape here I can drag over and we're back in business and I didn't have to like delete and recreate these dimensions. And, you know, those are the types of workflows that you want to spend time practicing while you're in the app so that you can implement them when you're in the real world. You know, when when you're actually on the clock, when the customer's standing there over your shoulder, you want to be able to, to drop some of these moves and they're they're not going to believe what they see. All right, so now we're going to go to Revolve, and this is going to be a Remove, and then we'll go here to Revolve Axis, and there we go. Look at that. That looks awesome. And then we hit the green check mark, and now for our final steps here, what we could do is we could press P to hide the planes, so P to hide the planes there. We could change the color of this thing a little bit. Um, we're getting to the top of the hour, so I don't want to go too crazy, but I'll at least change it to that green color. So Edit Appearance, and then we'll change this thing here to this green color. And there we go. That looks a little, little bit awesome. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the name of the part down here and we're going to say assign material. And the material we're going to assign here is going to be from the TTT custom materials and it's going to be TTT ABS so that we've got the exact correct material density. And so then we'll click down here in this lower corner where we've got this option here for uh, measure mass. So we click down here in this lower corner, click on the body anywhere, and we're coming up with a mass here of 87.7 grams. So let's go back into the Too Tall Toby app here, and we're going to type in 97.7 and enter, and oops, no, it's incorrect, not 97.7, 87.7, but it's kind of cool that if you get it incorrect, you get this nice warning to let you know that you got to keep going. So 87.7 and enter, and oh yeah, we did it. We got that answer correct. Metab says, Masterclass in Repair. Thank you. Rambrose Workshop says, That trim was neat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So there we go, guys. We did it in 16 minutes and 9 seconds. Let's submit our answer. And then one of my favorite things to do is after we answer this thing, I like to go down here and look at the first 42. So let's see where we are in the first 42. We got gray in here. Guys, I released this model on September 1st today at 1.36 p.m. And Gray was done with it by 1.39 p.m. Three minutes and 21 seconds. Wow, that is super impressive from the time it was released. Three minutes and 26 seconds. Victor K was only five seconds behind him. Man, and three minutes and 28 seconds. Only two, two seconds behind him. We got Rambro's workshop. Or we got Matab, excuse me. We got Matab there just two seconds behind Victor K. Wow, that is incredible. Guys, you guys are, are truly the speed demons. And here we see in the top 100, we can see how long it actually took them. And once again, look at how close these guys are. Gray finished it in two minutes and 51 seconds. Matab finished it in two minutes and 52 seconds. Victor K finished it in three minutes. So this is from the time you press start to the time you press finish. And this, this chart here, the top 100, this one can change over time. We could have people that uh, come in and try it again and get a faster time and get a faster time and get a faster time. But this one here, the first 42 is immutable. And uh, Gray was able to finish this one first. And he is going to earn the point here for today's challenge. So congratulations to Gray, but really congratulations to anybody who got on that first 42 board in such a short period of time. Wow, guys, that is really, really impressive to everybody who got.